to my channel if you're new here my name is Adrian and if you're a returning subscriber welcome 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 back before I move on please do not forget to subscribe to this channel I don't know I don't know if I've begged you in a while but please subscribe to this channel and while you're down there do not forget to click on your notification bell so that you can be notified when I post a new one and so that other people also like it so that other people can actually view these videos to people that are interested in videos like this can view these videos because so, i'm begging you now so please you know i can't wait to i can't wait for you so please subscribe um like you've already seen in the title today we're going to be talking about how much would it actually cost me to come to australia like how much do i need to migrate to australia how much do i need to study in Australia I want to come to Australia how much do I need in my bank account how much do I need to prove to immigration how much do I need and I'm going to be answering that question now so yeah let's go on it's so weird now because I've been off for a minute like I haven't posted any video in a while mainly I wouldn't say laziness but I would say that I'm in school too so sometimes school can be overwhelming and as we all know there's a lockdown in australia so coupled with lockdown and school and work i work in a sector that's essential so i still have to go to work so it's a bit sometimes it's a bit too much and i have to be like okay you know hold on which one is important you know you need your money to survive <laughs> ultimately and then you also need your academics because you came here to school so don't get carried away with the amount of money that you're making or um leisure because i do this on my free time i have my free time so yeah so today i'm just going to be talking about um how much does it actually cost to come to australia as a student if you're trying to migrate to australia as a student how much is it going to cost you this topic is Today I woke up and I got like I saw you know a comment and someone saying, Oh, please could you do a video about how much it would actually cost to come to Australia? And usually in the comment section, I kind of just always answer people and just tell them, Oh, this is how much it's gonna cost. Or if you send me an email, I'm like pretty um I don't want to say direct, but I'm pretty detailed and I'm like, oh, this is how much it's gonna cost to bring you here or the people that have asked me for the agents that I use and I'm pretty sure she has already mentioned how much it's going to cost to bring you home to Australia as a student. I'm just going to um, tell you how you could do it so you can actually just do it on your own and just try to find out how much it's going to cost you to come to Australia. If you, When you ask a lot of agents how much, you know, how much is it going to take me to come to Australia, each agent or each agency has, you know, the figures that they would give you. Um, those figures are based on, I would say, three factors or two factors, or maybe I'll just list them on as I go on. But it's based on the school, it's based on um, the location, and it is also based on um, the agency's history. History in the sense that um, how much their previous clients has put in their accounts, you know, how much is suitable or how much they use coming. So they kind of use that to kind of gauge you when you're coming here because they don't want you to get rejected because of insufficient funds or maybe um, immigration might think that you can't afford it. But over the years, it has actually changed because when I was coming into the country, when I first got my admission, I got my admission way back in 2017, but I deferred and I didn't come until, um, when I came into the country, which was in, in the beginning of 2020. So um, all I did was I kind of just um, pushed my admission because I wasn't ready for a master's then. And when I was finally ready, I actually came. What I noticed was that the amount that I needed to come into the country in 2020 was you know, way more than the amount that I would have needed if I you know, came into Australia in 2017 when I first, or I first got my admission into the, the university that I'm in now. And it was a bit annoying because I kind of had my head wrapped around a certain amount of money and I'm just like, oh, okay, it's not so much, you know, it not, it's not like it's not so much, but like it's, it's doable. And then when it came to the time that I was finally ready to come in, I'm like, is this doable? Is this, is this, is this doable? So I'm just going to help you um, break it down. So um, one of the things that they want to know is if you can afford to live on your own for one year without support without support meaning that um they want to know that in your account on your sponsor's account you should have at least one year so say one year money that could last you for a year so say upkeep 
So this consists of your accommodation, your utilities, your living expenses, um, everything. So they would have your school would actually give you if you, if you get the brochure, you will see that um, it has a list of how much you're supposed to, how much they would budget for you for utilities, how much they will budget for accommodation in a year, how much they will budget for living expenses. This is like you know food shopping. If you decide to buy clothes, you want to buy books, things like that. Supplies. They kind of put all that into one whole amount, and they expect that once you're coming into the country. You're supposed to have that amount in your account and i'm going to go back to what happened when covid started so when when covid started in australia um a lot of when a lot of people lost their jobs especially international students um it actually came to play because the well, i said the australian government was actually looking out for their own first before looking out for international students and what happened was people that had come in january and were saying oh you know we don't have there's no job because everywhere places are shutting down you know there's a pandemic we're not working we're not making money we can't afford so many things um the government actually said that um the government actually said that if you came in by january you should still have money that will last you to the end of the year because you had to show that you had that money so i wouldn't say that they were not hesitant to help people that came in say january but they still felt like, you know, if you had proved that, if you proved to the um, immigration that you had money for that year, one year, you should have money. So they were not exactly providing so much help for people. So it was majorly maybe your school that would, you know, provide help for you. And some schools actually even do that, honestly. But that's not why we're here. We're here to talk about how much it would cost you to actually come to Australia. So we're going to look at your expenses. Um, your expenses, I would say that it also depends on where you're located. If your school is in a prime location, so if your school is in a CBD, um, it's going to cost more because if you're planning to stay around your school, you're trying planning to, you know, that's accommodation, transportation, you know, um, it might reduce the amount of money you want for transportation here. Yeah, but like if you're trying to calculate all those things, I don't know, my first year I wanted to travel <laughs> around Australia, which is what I wanted the channel to be about. But COVID has another thing coming for me, so let's let's move on to something else. Anyhow, if you're gonna stay in a CBD, you have to think of okay, how much is it going to be for rent? Rent in CBD areas are pretty expensive, and if your school is in a regional area, it's obviously going to be cheaper for you to pay rent because um, regional areas are actually cheaper to live in, and the schools are also um, cheaper because you can get discounts with schools. In other schools, it doesn't mean you cannot get discount, but some schools wouldn't give you discounts. But if you're looking for the best deals for university. Um, universities, I think you should look at regional areas because the universities actually give so much discounts. I know a lot of people that have changed schools and you know have moved to the regional areas and the school fees is I don't want this ridiculous but it's so cheap and I'm like wow you know you're paying that money and I'm paying this amount I want to come to your school but that's not happening because I'm almost done so I can't I can't be doing that right now but um those type of things actually um Kind of calculate into how much you spend coming to school in australia universities are also paramount like and i'm saying that they're cheaper schools and they're also expensive schools so i would say that do your research well like do your research properly ensure that you check for the schools you know in the area that you want to go to if you don't have an, an idea of the area that you want to go to um think of what think of the course that you want to study first of all look for schools because it's not not every university carries you know some courses so you have to check for the school that actually carries the course that you want to study um check for regional area if you are looking at migrating with um like you're trying to study and then migrate to australia so try to look for regional areas and you can use that to kind of will i say gauge where you want to study uh, try to speak to a lawyer also i think one of the mistakes i made when i was moving was that i just thought that it was just about the school oh this is the course i want to study i will give you a tip right now and that tip is i understand you're passionate about something but if you want to migrate to another country i don't think you should don't do your passion yet unless your passion is on their what's it called on their um, skills migration list but try to study something that the country is looking for once you have gotten your grounding you've gotten um a job um you've gotten settled then go for something that you're passionate about because 
if not you'll be at a spot whereby you're trying to you've done something that you're passionate about you really love and then the course is not on their PR list or um, no area or no, um, no no state needs that course and then you're like okay I would have to go to school again and that's why you see a lot of people coming to to um, Australia and they've already done one course and then, then they're going again going back to school you've done two years I'm not saying, saying it's a waste of money it's not a waste of money to some people but you've already done two years in your mind you don't want to go to school again that's see that's that's the idea I have in my mind I'm like I don't want to go to school again I've already spent two years I'm not about to go to another university to go and do something else so but if you're not trying to maybe you've done a course and it's not your peer list and now you're going back to school to go and do another two years or three years depending on if you're doing a bachelor's or another master's so like you just do a course that's on their peer list it's annoying <laughs> it's annoying and it's a lot of money you're working and you're paying your fees you know if someone is sponsoring you <laughs> all good and good but then if you're sponsoring yourself you know you have that's a lot of work to do to actually pay that off you know so just do yourself a favor get a lawyer when you first come and figure out what are the courses that will not leave the what, what are the courses that will not leave the PR list what can I do that you know um, I knew the government is looking for and I could get my papers pretty fast because at the end of the day everybody kind of wants to get their papers pretty fast yeah moving back <laughs> to trying to figure out how much it's going to cost me to come to um, Australia so your school is a factor your living expenses is a factor living expenses kind of covers utilities supplies um, education and accommodation once these two factors I would say they're even like the biggest factors because you also want to know that you have the first year school fees so that's why you have to find a school that is within your budget if you have a budget if you even, if you even have an agent right now tell your agent your budget they can't beat you they can't you know if they can't find schools within your budget for you search yourself and check okay, this is this affordable universities in Australia Google it you'll find something but try to stick to your budget so that it's not overwhelming for you at the end of the day um, if it seems too expensive and you really want to go to the school send them an email and ask that oh you know I'm an international student coming into the country I wanted to find out if you have um, discounts for international students coming to the country what those schools might actually do is that they might actually just link you up with an agency that they work with in your country they do that a lot with universities especially if you're coming from Nigeria they will do that for you they will link you up with an agency that they partner with in your home country and that would actually save you because those ones they know the perks that the schools are going to give you um, a lot of those universities also give scholarships so they can give you full scholarship they can give you you know half scholarship um, I don't know what they call the third one but sometimes what they do is they take out maybe a tangible amount which can cover for like a semester two quarters a quarter you know every deduction is good <laughs> it's a win even if you get you know just one quarter off from the entire school fees you know it's, it's a win for everybody it's a win-win but do not be scared to actually ask for a discount do not be scared to actually ask okay what are the scholarship options they have scholarship options in every school you don't have to be a first class graduate to actually get a scholarship you don't have to be for paying early like if you pay your fees in say uh, my school when i was coming what they did was they said if you if you if you pay your fees before a certain date you know you get this money off your school fees and it's not i don't have a first class <laughs> so it was it's not by first class it's not by anything but they have different options they have people that on full scholarship you can still get into a scholarship once you're in university and you're doing really well with, you know with your studies you can get a scholarship you know they have different options but if you don't ask you will not know yeah maybe your agents will tell you maybe the, your agents will not tell you but like just ask there's nothing nothing will happen just ask so say your school is I'm gonna say ten thousand. I haven't seen a school that's ten thousand though. But okay, I'm gonna use a more realistic amount. Say your school is um forty two thousand for the two years that you're going to spend. That's for two thousand um dollars, Australian dollars. Please check the currency exchange. I'm gonna put how much it is today. Today is actually Monday, and this video will most likely go up on Tuesday or Wednesday. So let's just say for the sake of Monday. Um, I'm gonna check what the exchange rate is and then I'm gonna put it up 
when I'm editing this video. Australian ex um, exchange rate is actually different from the USD, which is the American dollars, and the CAD, which is the Canadian dollars. So it's just it's it's just a slight difference between the Canadian dollars actually, but this is I would say there's a significant difference with the USD. So they want to be sure that you can pay your fees for one year. They also want to be sure that you can afford to stay in the country on your own without support from government or anything for one year or so. So whatever your school fees is per year, think of how much your, um, your accommodation is going to be. Your accommodation, your school is actually going to do a breakdown like I said earlier. So let's just say you're going to spend 15000 for your accommodation. And if you do 42000 I'm sorry, I'm going to check my calculator because... Mass is not my first first thing to do. It's not my first love. <laughs> so let's say you have um, forty two thousand, yeah, and then you also have fifteen thousand. If you calculate, if you divide forty two thousand, say one year you pay twenty one thousand, and then another year you pay twenty one thousand. So what we're, what what you're looking at is that do you have twenty one thousand in your account? when you're coming to school in your sponsor's account so technically it's your sponsor's account if it's going to be your account they need to sh you need to show proof that you have other you know assets in nigeria whatever country that you have they want to see how like you're making the money basically that's 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 all for immigration so say it's 21,000 plus 15,000 and that's 36 so now once you're coming into the country or once you're applying for your visa, immigration wants to see that you have 36,000 in your account. I'm going to calculate what 36,000 is now. So I'm going to use the rate, um, exchange rate um, 370 because that's black market rates. Um, if you go to the bank and you're trying to pay your fees, please go through Form A. You get such an amazing discount because you know it's easier to pay your school fees with Form A. You get the bank rates, it's, it's way cheaper. You know they give a cheaper rate for if you're paying your school fees so go through from a if you're in nigeria so let's just say i'm going to use for the sake of this video i'm going to use the 370 that is um supposedly black market rate so there's six thousand times 370. this is you know <laughs> this is in your face calculation right now so according to my calculator i don't know if you can see this yeah but you need about you need 13.3 million and you know 320 but you say round round off you need about 13.3 million in your account once you apply now this 13.3 million some agencies will tell you to round it up to 15 million naira, majorly because anything can happen yeah and this is for one year so they expect that in one year you'll be spending about 13.3 million naira. but they want to know that you can pay for your fees for your first year and you can also cover your living expenses your accommodation utilities books whatever whatever thing you have to pay for for your first year but they want to ensure that you have that in your account so if you actually talk to an agent they will tell you that okay if this is the amount then you know maybe 14 i spoke when, before coming to australia when I, the first agent that i spoke to which was the same agent my one of my friends you use and that agent was telling me that you know i have to have about 20 million in my account and i'm just like where do i want to see 20 million from where, where am i getting 20 million from you know i wasn't the one paying but still yet please 20 million from where are we just putting 20 million in our account and we're leaving it there? Do we just leave it? There's nothing to do with 20 million there. So because even when I was coming and I told my dad like, oh, we have to leave this money in this account. Because you actually have to leave the money in the account for about six months before you apply. Um, For mine, because it was delayed a bit, I actually left um the money for three months. And even that three months was a struggle because... You know, um, my sponsor wanted to use the money for something else because they're like, how would you just leave money there like that? But that's the amount that you actually need, depending on your school. So, um, calculating whatever the school fees is from whatever university you're coming to, I'm pretty sure you should be able to take it. How much is my first year school fees? How much is my living expenses? Or how much is the living expenses that my university? has kind of budgeted for me don't try to say oh i'm not going to spend up to this money things are expensive so you would actually spend up to that money so just use whatever calculation that they have put there and then you'll be able to find out how much you'll be able to pay um how much you need in your account for one year and within that one year my loves 
save 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 try to get a job don't look at any job like as if oh this job is too small and bigger than this which is what i did in my first one month or would like say a month and a half before reality hit me i didn't want to do some particular jobs like i said in my previous videos but like you know a girl has to pay bills so don't look at any job just save and save and save and save and before you know it's your first one year you would have actually gotten back the money that you spent including school fees and if you want to pay your school fees the second year you'd be able to a lot of universities also do this thing like you don't have to pay everything at once so you can pay your um, um confirmation of enrollment which is a deposit they actually ask you to pay and then you can pay for one quarter or one trimester or one semester depending on how much it is in other schools like depending on how much your school fees is so say it's a trimester just say it's a trimester so even if you have shown immigration that this is the amount that i have for three um, for one year and honestly maybe the money wasn't yours and you put it in your account just to pile up your account because people do that you might not have the money um but you put it in your sponsor's account maybe you kind of just get money together put it for the three months that you need um what you can also do is like as long as you have paid your c of ee that's your confirmation of enrollment and you have paid say your first semester school fees you don't have to pay the whole year once you can actually pay semester by semester it might be cheaper for you because people do it i know a lot of people that you know maybe their sponsor kind of just help them pay for the deposit and their first semester or your first quarter so in australia it's it's not just one you know two semesters in a year you have two semesters in a year you have trimesters which is three semesters in a year so three trimesters like one two three i think i think the name is it's pretty much obvious but trimesters so three you have three semesters in a year and then you have quarters which is what i'm doing and it's um, four quarters in a year so you you have you can pay for the first quarter second quarter third quarter you know and then fourth quarter you don't have to pay for the whole full year you can just pay bit by bit it's almost like you're paying so mentally they give you a census date which is a month after the um a month after the session has started so you know you still have a you still have grace if you don't meet up with the money um, within the period of the census try to apply for a payment plan and you can actually spread your payment throughout the whole quarter so they actually make it easy for you um, get into the country and then you'll be able to sort things out and I know that things might not be looking a bit bright because you know the borders are still locked um, international students are not coming in yet but we're hearing that they open the borders soon they're trying to get people to get vaccinated and the borders will be open for international students because I think that's the, you know, their top priorities. International students coming to the country and um, international students that are stuck abroad. I don't know, I'm just watching the news like every other person. But, you know, I hope to see you guys here soon. If you got to the end of this video, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much for staying here. Um, I will try to be consistent. <laughs> i'll be trying to be consistent my quarter is almost over so um i would have more time pretty soon i am swamped with so much assignment and so much you know coursework and i know that you know sometimes that makes me slow on production or lazy to actually come here and film a video because in my mind i'm thinking about what am i doing i'm supposed to be doing other things but thank you so much for watching thank you for coming back i appreciate it so much thank you thank you have a good day bye